Welcome back. In this section, I'm going to introduce the concepts of altitudes and medians. Let's begin with altitude. The definition of an altitude, so this is a definition, so it's going to be reversible. A, an altitude is a line segment drawn from any vertex of a triangle to the opposite side and is perpendicular to that side. So if it's perpendicular, then it's going to be, then it's going to form a right angle. So the, a reason you might use in proof would be an altitude of a triangle forms right angles with the opposite side. And the implication here is the opposite side of the triangle. All triangles have three altitudes makes sense that they have three vertices and three sides, we can draw one from any of the vertices. Well, you may have to extend the side of a triangle to ensure perpendicularity. For example, if we had a triangle that looked something like this. Okay, certainly we can draw an altitude from this vertex that's perpendicular to its opposite side. However, from this one, not so easy. So our altitude is going to drop straight down and we extend the side and so there's our altitude. So we have to extend the side of the triangle. Okay? So there's an example of how we might have to extend the side. So there's two of our um, altitudes for that particular triangle. The next thing is in this section is medians. Medians are slightly different than altitudes, although sometimes a median is an altitude, sometimes an altitude is a median. But so the median of a triangle. Now the median, this is a definition, so it's reversible, is the line segment drawn from any vertex or angle of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So if it's drawn to the midpoint, well if we know what midpoints do, midpoints create congruent segments or divide a segment into two congruent segments, then that's what a median does. A median is going to split the side of a triangle into two congruent segments. Whereas an altitude, all that does is form a right angle with the opposite side. So our reason in a proof would be something like this. A median of a triangle divides the opposite side into two congruent segments. Conversely, if a segment drawn from a vertex divides the side into two congruent segments, then it's a median. So there you can see how that is reversible. Every triangle is going to have three medians because it has three vertices and three sides. So just like we did just like we did previously, if we have a triangle, each triangle is going to have three medians. So my medians here might come like that and we'll bisect that side or my median will come this way and bisect that side or my median will bisect that side. So notice that we don't care we don't have to extend a side or anything. We're going to draw it right to that side and we don't care the angle it makes as long as it bisects the side. So that is an example of the median. Okay, so altitudes form right angles and medians bisect the opposite side or go to the midpoint. One thing to keep in mind, a median can be an altitude and an altitude can be a median, but sometimes always never, you know, a median is always an altitude. Well, not always, or a median is an altitude sometimes. Depends on the kind of triangle. And we'll talk about that more in the future.
And the last thing in this section is one on auxiliary lines. This is going to be very helpful for us when we've got groups with circles or we need an additional line. Okay, we have a postulate that any two points can determine a line, array, or a segment. Okay, so if you draw an auxiliary line in your diagram, you must state so in your proof. Now, please don't go crazy on your proofs drawing lines all over the place because you think you need an auxiliary line. It's not going to come up quite that often. It will come up more frequently when you have circles and you need radii, that kind of thing. Okay? But we don't need to be drawing lines all over your proof thinking you need an extra line. Um, you might draw an altitude or a median or something that makes sense. So let's just say we have a, a circle. With a center, and we'll make the center A. And we might have a segment, okay, uh, BC, and we might have a segment AP. Now, in this, if that's the only thing we have in our diagram, yeah, we might need something else to help us out we might want to draw an additional segment here. And this makes sense. We can draw this segment AC. That would be our auxiliary line. And that totally makes sense to do that because that is a radius. Okay? And we know all radii of a circle are congruent. Okay, I'm going to call this AO. So, Here's our example of we drew in this auxiliary line, so we've got to put that in our proof. So I drew segment AL, and my reason would be two points determine a segment. So I might also draw in AB, okay? For the same reason, well, that helps me out a lot because now I have two congruent segments and I have radii of a circle are congruent. So that really helps me out. So that is an example of how and why you would use an auxiliary line in a proof. From here, we'll move on to some sample problems and I will see you momentarily. So here's our sample problem for our lesson on altitudes, medians, and auxiliary lines. So here's an example of a proof of what you'll be seeing and practicing. We're given G is the midpoint of FH, and we get EF is congruent to EH, and we want to prove that angle 1, this angle out here, is congruent to angle 2. So let's see how we can manage this one. Well, we're given G is the midpoint of FH, so then we must know that HG is congruent to FG, and we would say uh, midpoint divide the segment into congruent segments. And then we are given that EF, off my spot, EF is congruent to EH. Better mark my diagram here. Well, let's take a look at this. I'm really close to having a couple triangles here. So if I draw EG, Okay, so not a circle, but here's an example of where an auxiliary line is going to help us. So two points form a segment. I draw an EG, and EG is congruent to itself by reflexive.
and now my two triangles are congruent by side side side. So step six, triangle ABG. Be careful with your correspondence. Triangle ABG is congruent to triangle FED. And we said that was side side side. And steps two, four, oh, no, two, three, and five. Give us our three sides. And then I also know that angle three is congruent to angle four. By CPCPC. Those aren't the angles we want, but they're supplementary to the angles we're trying to get to. So I have to establish supplements because I'm going to use supplements of congruent angles or congruent, aren't we? So I'm going to say angle one, supplementary to angle three, and angle two, supplementary. To angle four in our region here or eight. If two angles form a straight angle, then they're supplements. Two angles form a straight angle, then they're su supplements. So Eight and nine, same as eight. And then step 10, all that's a long proof. We've got angle, these two angles are congruent by CPCPC. We established that already here in step seven. And then our supplements. So one must be congruent to two. And our reason. Supplements of congruent angles are congruent. We're starting to get into some longer, more extensive proofs using some of the skills that we've established in prior lessons, our midpoint definition, uh, some of the new stuff here with drawing the auxiliary line, um, but reflexive, side, 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 CPCPC, supplements is old news. And so some prior knowledge is very helpful. So again, here's an example of we've got all the answers, we've got all those tools, but we've got to know when to pull those out of our toolbox and use them. And we'll get more practice with this when I see you in class.